Cheers! I will show you a trick that I found um, casually. It's one of those things that uh, we don't pay too much attention. They seem complicated and they are not. And um, at the end, since I use uh, and discovered that trick, I always use it because it allows me to avoid having elongated stars while I'm uh, doing my EAA sessions. That means while I'm doing live stacking in SharpCap Pro, if I extend a little bit the, the exposure time, with this trick I'm allowed to do that without having the stars like potatoes that we uh, all uh, don't like. You can use this trick also in astrophotography and uh, in other setups, different than mine. But in this particular setup, a uh, 12-inch solid tube F5 Dobsonian on an equatorial platform, which has periodic errors that we can't uh, Solve. It's a very important and useful trick to use. So important that I always use uh, from then. So let's see a uh, live action uh, session uh, I did with um, watching the, the Eagle Nebula, which I choose because it's a, a very known and, and beautiful nebula to, to watch and easy to, to find. Let's just see it in uh, real time. So I found the Eagle Nebula and now I will do the live stack. Mm. Let's try 10 seconds. It's important the first frame uh, could enter with um, nice uh, stars. Let's see. Not very nice, I will clear. Let's see. Clear again. I keep clearing to reset all the the process until I have one good frame to start. That is very important. The red columns here, uh, I the trick is here, the, the full width of maximum. So this filter uh, you can increase or decrease. You find the balance. Now I have seven, I will see how it works. But uh, the trick is to it didn't work. The green ones are the good ones, but clearly the the stars are are bad. So I will clear again. We have to. You got to have patience. Okay. Now we got a, a decent frame. So the first one wa was uh, red because it was more than the limit I, I choose, the 7 here, okay, you can increase here or decrease, and let's see how it works. The, the red one, this frame was rejected, okay, so we have two frames, two good frames, and one ignored, two now, the first one uh, he didn't uh, consider, so you can see down here, two stack, two ignore. Now, we have to find a balance. We don't want two stack and 30 ignore. We have to find a, find a balance, like more or less 50-50 or so, to allow us to have a, a decent stack. While he's operating, I will go to the histogram and do the color and then the stretch out of stretch here for you to see the nebula and me okay so 
Eagle Nebula is here. Now let's see how it's going. So, 5 stacked, 5 ignored, 6 ignored. So we want at least uh, more or less 50-50 or 60-40. Uh, it's not a problem. The trade-off is we have to wait more. Now we have 60 seconds, so 1 minute. And uh, if uh, a filter was not needed, we add now uh, 2 minutes or more. So that is the, the trade-off. But look, they, the software rejected the, the bad frames because th those frames uh, happen because of the, um, the wind or my platform uh, periodic error. And I can't get rid of that periodic error because it's uh, in the motor, it's in the, in the gear. I can't do nothing, uh, at least a simple uh, way to, to fix it. Uh, maybe I can change the motor, um, things like that. But using what I have, uh, working with what I have, I found this trick very effective. And you can see that the stars keep uh, round and uh, if I don't use this this filter here, the first the two three frames and and uh, the image were uh, completely blown. Uh, look, three frames uh, with green. Then it enter one bad frame and it blows all the image. So it was for me impossible to work with this platform in. Uh, a regular uh, or permanent uh, uh, condition uh, with uh, longer exposures, more than four or five seconds to, to work without problems. But with this trick, I can uh, do it like I'm doing it now, with uh, 10 seconds now, right, it's 10 seconds, let me see, 10 seconds exposure. Okay, here. And um, I wait a bit more. But I can have some good frames. As we can see now, 13 stacked, 13 ignored. That's my purpose. If I have um, more uh, ignored than stacked, I have to play with the, the filter and uh, if I increase the, the software will be more, more tolerant and will accept, for example, if I put 9, these two red frames here will be accepted. But uh, may, may have uh, bad results, we don't know, just uh, have to try. So basically, I have this now. Uh, I have this now that I've discovered this trick. I have this always uh, check the filter on uh, full width of maximum, and um, this will basically keep uh, my chances to have uh, a nice uh, live stack with uh, a bit longer exposures. Sometimes I I already try with 15 seconds and it worked in a. Uh, good night. It depends also where the, the object is positioned in, uh, in the sky. Uh, this one now is uh, at south, more or less, and uh, it's uh, at 37 degrees altitude. Mm, it's more or less uh, well positioned. It's not bad for me. But it um, could be better, but it's okay. So we are seeing 19 stack, 20 ignored. We keep the balance and 3 minutes and 10 seconds. So we are watching this, enjoying the object. We can, as I usually do, make a zoom here. Look, you want to see the, the pillars of creation. See, you can watch the details and look at the stars. 
They are not elongated. They are not potatoes or, or Saturns. They sometimes they look like Saturns because they they shake and they get uh, messed up. So we go again to the auto. You see what a nice image. Then you would just adjust as usual the histogram. You can do it like this. You see how it works like this is too much. Or to the right. Okay. The color we can see they have now a zoom feature here, but for me it's not needed. But it can help. Look. The, the green one, you see a, a bit of excessive green around the, the nebula. We can check this and we can see that uh, the green line, the green curve is too much to the right. So we come here and click one, two, you see it's better. It's aligned with the others and with the white one. So we have this uh, balance. And check the zoom okay you see this is fine the histogram and the image too you can see that we are getting more and more detail this uh, horizontal bars will disappear at the end of the frame it's a i don't know a sensor thing issue whatever it it doesn't mess with the image so as you can see my love stack is getting fine with the Eagle Nebula. It's a fine nebula. While I wait, I, I usually wait a bit more. Uh, I prefer to wait a bit more and uh, watch um, less objects. Now, at the beginning, I usually watch uh, in the night 20 objects, sometimes more. But now uh, I love stack uh, the EAA with less objects, but um, I spend more time, and especially because of this trick that we are talking about now, the, the full width half maximum. You see, 28, 28, 27, almost five minutes. It's it's doing very well. See, so while. We're watching this. I will check the um, Sky Safari. I go to the Sky Safari object info. And the famous Eagle Nebula that has gained public attention by its picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. This nebula in Serpents is a twisting and irregular fan shaped cloud in the form, sort of, of an eagle with open wings. Within the gas is the Star Queen, or a set of three spikes of gas that look like a woman's head, upper body, and her two upraised arms. A quick calculation shows that if the Queen wore an analog watch, the width of the second hand to scale would be considerably more than the diameter of our solar system. Whether as an eagle or queen, M16 is fun to explore with a small telescope. Within its clouds, new stars are being produced. And one can only wonder why, since the region nearby reveals apparently no shortage of stars at all. So I like to, to listen to the, the audio tour that Sky Safari app have with uh, almost uh, at least uh, the most important objects of the sky. It's funny to to listen, and then I go to the to Google or the NASA uh, and check what they have to say. Especially the objects I don't know very well, and even the ones that that I know from last year or something, I, I repeat and uh, and I like to um, to read something about them again. It's funny while we are stacking. Uh, especially if you are alone, you are doing something. Um, let's check the the stack is 36, 31. It's very nice. And that's it. I will while I'm waiting because I want to to, to finish this uh, this stacking about 10 minutes maybe. So if you don't. If you want to stay with me because I will 
talk a little bit more about uh, what I'm doing here. So they changed with this uh, Shark Cap uh, 4 version. Version. They they changed the um, the number of stars to sensitivity. I use like this. 80. Uh, the, no the noise reduction I keep the 0 0.5. And uh, this aligning using, I, I use the, the minimum of 10 stars and the line frames, of course. Um, ah, the announcement. Sometimes I, I have the, the Gaussian blur and sometimes I use, it depends on, on the object. Uh, you can read about do, these two features of enhancement the noise reduction and the sharpening on um, shark cap uh, instructions so. and um, then you you will understand better what, how they work sometimes i use them sometimes i don't, I don't. in this case in this nebula i like to use this one and sometimes this unsharp mask, if uh, there's a lot of of, um, of noise, it will uh, not work so so well to me for my eyes. But as it is now, it will not mess with uh, with the nebula. So we'll check it, and it improves a little bit of detail on this kind of little details which in this nebula is fine because of the the pillars of creation that we have here so it will define better uh, those details also the stars a little bit uh, the dust also it will get more uh, more detail when the nebula is uh, with um, loads of uh, little pixels and uh, like noise and it it will not work very well i don't like it but in this case it work both of them work uh, work well so let's see how the auto okay 47 38 is very nice seven minutes uh, almost eight so we have here uh, a nice image we are watching watching the uh, the, the object very nice uh, uh, image here framed and um, and we we know already the trick to get to keep this image nice without uh, being messed by the 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 elongated stars like potatoes if i put in if i increase the the exposure time it will be a, a limit with my setup depending of the day and some factors but it will have a limit uh, today is not very windy it's not windy so it's dealing only with the errors of the platform itself as and um, and it's doing uh, fine with uh, the 10 seconds and that's enough for me to as you can see to have a nice uh, very nice image to enjoy with uh, about 10 10 minutes now i will do the snapshot i click here save exactly as seen as you know and that's it it's it's saved already the um, the snapshot uh, of this you see it's here it's very nice okay i hope you have enjoyed this uh, little trick it's very simple it's just to check and do as i did and uh, you will get rid at least uh, you will get rid of the 
the elongated stars problem in EAA, at least uh, we, it will allow you to increase a little bit more the exposure time in your life stacking um, without having uh, a setup that is designed for that. Uh, it's uh, in a way you you override the limitations of this kind of setup, which I remember, a 12 inch solid tube GSO F5 Dobsonian telescope with uh, on a, a, an equatorial platform, a geoptic, and using a ZWO AZ294MC, so an uncooled camera, um, to, to imaging. I have, it's an uncooled, uh, it's a fake uncooled because I, when I, I start uh, today the, the imaging, this was over, uh, it was about 31 or almost 32 degrees of temperature. And now it's 27. Why? Because of uh, my uh, mini cooler project that I did. And you can see in the um, in other video. Okay. Cheers.